Have you read? Based off Sefiata's novel Swallow, which was originally published in 2008, that follows the story of two women who struggles with problems of gender, class, and life in the city of Lagos. Director Kunle Afolayan crafts a cinematic expression of 1980s Nigeria with stunning set design, costume, props, location, and an ensemble cast to go on a two-hour plus journey that falls flat and raises more questions with none answered as it jettisons the original dual narrative and world-building pattern from its source material of which it stands and self-prescribed itself as a hard pill to swallow. This is a no-spoiler review, but if you want to see a critical, detailed, and spoiler-filled review, you should check out the Roku Critics. Critics which received. Trust us, you won't regret it. They are like us but Mina. <laughs> Let's review. We lead by life's pressures in 1980s Lagos, Nigeria, Tolani becomes involved in drug smuggling with her streetwise friend and must face the fallout. Swallow follows the life of Tolani Ajao, played by Niola, who makes her acting debut as the lead in this story and her friend Rose, played by the award-winning Ijoma Grace Agu, popularly known for movies such as Hood Rush and Taxi Driver. The duo, who happens to be roommates and work colleagues, plagued with the harsh realities of living and making ends meet, are faced with a dilemma patched against morals after meeting O.C., played by Kevin Ikeduba, an American returnee who introduced Rose and Tolani to the world of drug trafficking. Opening with our introduction to Tolani and her journey home with the premise of her tales of suffering which she narrates to her mother, the story gradually introduces us to other characters such as Rose and establishes the dynamics of a semi-detached relationship between the two. It is only in the tail end of the first act we tend to realize that they are in fact roommates and share more than just a working relationship as colleagues in the same banking establishment that is to set the pace for the presumed suffering to come with Rose losing her job and Tolani set as a replacement working under a sadistic Mr. Salako and then the struggle to pay rent. Set in the backdrop of 1985 Nigeria, the attention to detail in set design and costume is one of the aspects that draws you in. The scenery rightfully depicted with creative shots that truly takes you to the era and the color properly graded suits decently enough with a sprinkle of throwback black and white even though some aspects of teal and orange were still very much inadmissible. Apart from the aesthetics and the perceived aura of excellence of fine cinematography expressed in the first act, nothing else makes for a compelling piece of cinema as Swallow moves to further becomes a ball fest that ushers you in regretfully to a two hour plus of bland narration and a convoluted plot arrangement with no reasonable plot progression which leaves you lost in wonder as to what exactly is the story talking about or what really it is that justifies its existence as a movie. In terms of performance, Niola's portrayal of Tolani leaves more to question as to why her, what was so special about her that she was cast as the lead, as she had no charisma given that her constant word count and expressions didn't seem natural or humanly organic to be relatable enough to evoke any real emotion to ascribe to the character, let alone give room for the audience to be sympathetic to her presumed suffering. The movie also boasts of some supporting and renowned actors such as Choma Akwota, Eniola Badmos, Demi Okanlawo, Frank Donga, and Messi Aigbe, who in their own right added some sense of watchability. But the movie in its entirety doesn't boast of any high point as it remains flat on its surface with a narrative that begs the question as to where the hell the story plans to take a turn for the better. Then there is the choice of a one-person narrative as opposed to having to understand the perspective from the angle of Rose who was a more likable and relatable character. Please note, this review is by no means done to compare the literary body of work and its reimagination in this Netflix adaptation. Eh. It. Cause it really didn't do justice to a simple story that should have at least taken cognizance of the two-person narrative which is Rose and Tolani as done in the books. Maybe if it did, we would have had a better grasp of the intended essence or point of this movie. Mommy. In the end, Kunle Afolayan's adaptation of Sefi Atta's Swallow which was also written by Sefi Atta herself, falls flat not only in all its execution, from its presentation, plot, exposition and narration, it also largely failed to convey the emotions that encapsulate the characters, making it quite hard to understand its building block or the premise of Tolani's opening statement of I have suffered. 
Swallow is one of those movies that tries too hard to address societal ills without actually having substance, as it seemed to focus more on trying to create nostalgic 1980s vibe rather than the actual story that should have been engaging, entertaining and even more educative. Swallow is a hard pill to swallow. Just read the book, your imagination will do better justice instead. So what do you think of our review? Do you agree? Do you not? Have you seen Swallow yet? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up. For more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to Popcorn and Reels, hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we drop a new video and remember, whoever you are, wherever you are, never ever stop suffering. No, mm -mm. never ever stop watching movies. Catch you guys soon. Notice how this review managed to stay off anything that has to do with the wigs. I mean, come on, we talked about it in his last movie. Yeah, and it's here again. We guess he's just trolling this time, like, yeah, you guys got angry about the wig the last time, I'm gonna put more wig in this. You get a wig, you get a wig, you get a wig, everybody gets a wig. As one of our friends says, maybe he's just taking a cue from coming to America. <laughs> I feel good.